well uh, I kind of introduced the idea in another video where I'm building a long scale tenor ukulele and on building this classical guitar which um, I copied the, the shape and scale length and, and all of the specs from my daughter's Estivate. And, and the story behind that was I had found this beautiful uh, instrument in an antique shop. Uh, it was a junk store, really. Uh, they had three classical guitars, each for $75. I noticed one of them had a, had a genuine cedar top, so I nabbed it, got it home, cleaned all the muck off of it and found out it was brand new and uh, got to looking at it saw it was an Estive handmade in Spain which are top of the line classical guitars I played it enough to know I absolutely loved it and decided to narrow the neck a little bit just because I'm me and when I did my daughter loved it because it fit her perfectly and I gave it to her I prefer to say she absconded with it but I gave it to her and uh, so the other day she brought it over so that I could get a pattern and I uh, decided to essentially copy it in shape and scale, etc. So that's that. I'm using this mahogany neck blank, um, you know, $20 neck blank. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty hard to talk myself into getting a piece of mahogany and going to all that work for that amount of money. Uh, so that's the one piece I'm not carving out this time. Uh, this is a piece of oak that I have from my son-in-law and uh, I just milled it down uh, to about three-eighths of an inch uh, on a table saw because it was a big, it's a big slab and I'm going to plane it down to probably about 3 16 of an inch or so and use that for the fretboard uh, because I like the coloring here um, and I'm hoping to figure out a way to get that into my fretboard just to be different. Uh, I have glued some boards together for the top and the back and so <clears throat> this will be the top. And what we have here is some red cedar from the local area that came from a slab that my son-in-law had logged. In the middle, we have some white cedar that came from my fence board, uh, getting a lot of mileage out of that thing. And there's some tiger wood strips I put in there just to add color and blend um, that came from some flooring. And unfortunately, it's a beautiful and straight grain here. It's a little, it's a burl and there's a knot here, but that's getting covered because on this particular instrument, I have decided to make a percussion board like on the, this little deal here. So only I'll make it out of oak. And I did plane down some of that oak already into eighth inch boards. And those will become a sound board on the front of that that I just showed you. And the back is a blend between new wood and oak. And which we have here and of course again just to keep things matching there's some tiger wood strips in the middle as I glued it together so this is yew wood which I suppose technically is a softwood because it's a conifer but it is the hardest softwood I I've seen it's really a hard wood and so I'm using it as a back. I think it'll make good back material, I, better than it does top material in my opinion. It probably would be good if I wanted to start using it to bend for sides and things like that too. Um, and then the same old thing for oak and that'll be the back of the guitar. So we're gonna have that blend. Uh, oak is gonna be kind of a constant theme between the back, the percussion board things like that with the cedar top. And um, we're just gonna keep plugging away on that on the side while we're finishing other projects. But I thought I'd get that started. And of course, you know, the neck will go on like this and we'll have ourselves a classical guitar when we're done. And this neck, um, I will narrow down to match, well, 
Hold on a minute. So as I was saying, this neck is going to be narrowed down a bit. It's not bad, really. It's, it's pretty standard and it's the right width for a classical guitar. Um, I'm not a classical guitar player. I played a little bit when I was younger and, and kind of learned some stuff so I could look cool at a music store, but uh, it's really not my thing. And, uh, you know, I think it's wonderful and I, I wish I could talk myself into practicing and getting good at that sort of thing. But um, I'm gonna narrow the neck anyhow because that's what I'm used to and I like it. It's not gonna be as narrow as a steel string, of course. What I'm gonna do is match this neck, which at this part is about two inches wide versus I think two and an eighth is this, two and an eighth to two and a quarter is more of a standard. And, and it stays pretty, a, a little bit more narrow all the way along. And uh, this is actually the first banjo uh, there's another video out there on this build. Uh, this is the first banjo I've ever I ever built and I just right now ha don't have the resonator on the back because when you're playing it alone you don't need that much volume and it's actually quite powerful but uh, it was a broken uh, classical neck that I used and put a piece of ash in from a friend of mine's property that he had cut down and milled and blended it in to attach it to this walnut framework that is, uh, you know, angled together out of blocks and then routed into a circle in the important parts. Uh, and you can learn about that on whatever video that's about. Uh, it's a six string nylon string banjo that I'd made. It was actually, it's not my first video, but it was the actually the first banjo I ever made. Not my first instrument. I piddled around with other instruments in the past before I really started keeping track. In any case, all that to say, I'm going to make the neck on the classical guitar match my banjo neck so when I go between them, they feel exactly the same. Uh, I'm The one thing I'll do differently on this one uh, is I'm going to experiment with a zero fret on it. Um, as I often do and prefer and if I absolutely love the zero fret I will I'll take that banjo apart and Put some wood in the where the nut is so I can put a zero fret in and Change that and put it back together because you know I'm nuts and uh, if I hate the zero fret then I'll, I'll just cut that piece out of the fretboard and put a nut in there. So that, that's how that'll work. We'll discover that together. Hope you enjoy this guitar video. finish it here it is and um, yes this was uh, the, the background music when you saw the photos was this uh, this instrument being played and so um, you saw the pictures there's the back with the yew wood and the oak and um, I this the neck I stained and the sides it's uh, I actually rubbed it with a red mahogany stain which I felt thought was too red so I rubbed it again with an ebony stain to tone that down and the combination gave me what what I have and I used a white pearl trim I got some electronics in it uh, they work very well um, which are three um, just three uh, little discs that 
are uh, wired together and hooked on. I've got two behind the bridge, one in front of the bridge, and it picks up the sound from the, the uh, top, the soundboard, and it, it sounds really well. I've got my um, percussion board made out of oak on top covering that knot hole, and it also has a purpose, made an armrest out of tiger wood. Um, all in all, really uh, great. The, the fret board came out marvelously. I love the zero fret. I'll be keeping it. I will be adding a zero fret to my banjo later. And uh, got my little hummingbird on there in honor of my wife who's from Trinidad, the land of the hummingbirds. And uh, that's the full meal deal. Uh, it came out really well. I like the way it plays. It, it feels right. Uh, the body's just a tad uh, deeper than um, my daughter's Estive body would have been. I, I kind of lean more towards the depth of my dreadnought, uh, <laughs> my Gretsch dreadnought, to give it a little deeper tone. So that's how it came out. Um, I did uh, alter the bracing just a little bit on this uh, in that um, Jose Ramirez III was a luthier for Ramirez guitars. And in the 50s, he was pioneering some new things with guitars. And um, he uh, trying to get more tone and make them a little louder and so on and so forth. And so he... Uh, in the fan bracing, he created the concept of what the, is called a tone bar, and it's a it's a piece of bracing that goes across the treble side and firms it up, and uh, it goes right through here. And so I did add that to the fan bracing, and uh, I'm happy with it. Uh, you certainly could look him up. There are a lot of designs and pictures of his bracing available. And, and what he did and uh, he also is the one that uh, pioneered uh, the, the really pioneered the idea of the use of red cedar in classical guitars he believed it was better than spruce and prior to the 50s most classical guitars were being made with spruce and after his his influence in design and, and so on and so forth particularly for Segovia uh, he uh, it, it, red cedar became a standard for classical guitars, so that's the whole the full meal deal. I call it a Spanish guitar. It's not really a classical, and it's not really a flamingo uh, guitar. So the idea uh, Spanish guitar is a category of guitars that use nylon strings and tie on the bridge, just as this one does, and. Um, and in within that broader category, you have classical guitars and you have flamenco guitars. And uh, this is more of a blend of the two of them, uh, and with a with a few added touches of my own. Uh, it's got a narrower neck uh, than a classical, probably narrower than a flamenco also, but uh, and and it's certainly got a lower string action using the zero fret. Uh, the soundboard, the percussion board is unusual. That's a thing I, I took from the quattros. Um, so it, it just doesn't fit a category. Uh, so it's best just to call it a Spanish guitar. I, um, I took from different aspects using the red cedar from the classical guitar. Um, yet trying to get a uh, neck width and string action that's more like a flamenco guitar and yet uh, kind of Americanizing things I suppose is a good way to put it as I uh, put dots in the neck and I did things that I as a player wanted so that's it um, so I like the sound. Um, I play it a lot and I'm enjoying it very much. So I hope you enjoyed the idea behind this build process and um, we'll see what happens with the next thing.